In 2006, my mother discovered a lump on her breast. After getting a mammogram at the local clinic, the radiologist in my rural hometown diagnosed it as being benign. Just to be safe, we got a second opinion. And as it had turned out, it was actually malignant. We started treatment immediately, and I'm incredibly happy to say that she's doing well today. Oh, thank you. However, there are many patients who aren't so lucky. A misread in a medical image can have major negative health implications. Radiologists mostly gather their information by reading images. This is the number of images a radiologist would have had to interpret in one minute in 1999. And here's the number that they'll have to interpret in one minute today. There's been over a 500% increase in the amount of scan volume for radiologists. And even though there's five times as many scans, radiologists haven't gotten to be five times more efficient in reading those scans. Three point seven five. No, that's not a Wiseman score. That's the amount of seconds it takes for the total volume of what a radiologist gets in a week to be read. Radiologists are simply overwhelmed. And training radiologists is very resource intensive, taking lots of time and money. My co-founder Peter's strong background in machine learning, paired with my experience doing neuroscience research at Stanford for two years, gave us the skill set to help solve this problem. So we decided to start Behold.ai. Behold.ai medical software uses artificial intelligence to help radiologists find abnormalities in medical images. Behold.ai's cutting edge deep learning technology helps improve the workflow of doctors as well as the outcomes of patients. In the past couple of years, we've seen computer recognition technology become much better. Examples of this include Google's self-driving cars, as well as Amazon's autonomous drones. Let's walk through a use case of a patient. This is Joanne. Joanne is having some chest pains, so she decides to see her primary care physician. After meeting with their primary care physician, they decide to further investigate and get a chest CT scan. So then Joanne finally gets a scan done. And let's go to the demo. This is what a radiologist would see. It's simply a work study of what they have to complete and the patients they have to diagnose. So why don't we go in and look at Joanne's scans? A radiologist has a variety of slices of medical information that they can use to diagnose the patient. Traditionally, a radiologist would look at each single one of these scans separately to do the analysis. Behold's technology can allow us to prioritize the scans that the radiologists are looking at today. This paired with the ability of technologies such as natural language processing and emergency medical records can help us really give the doctor a huge advantage in making their diagnosis. Let's go back to the slides, please. So in Joanne's case, depending on the diagnosis, she can either continue and get a biopsy, she might be fine as well, or if things happen to not go so well, she can see an oncologist potentially as well. So right now, we're working with a variety of vendors who are currently making the software in this space. This way, we can seamlessly integrate into the workflow of radiologists, because the last thing that they want is to take up their, a lot of their time doing something that they're not used to. We also have another cha uh, channel of sales and distribution, the first being the partnerships, and the second being direct sales to hospitals. And in our partnerships with hospitals, what we can provide to them is our technology and what we can get from them is the ability to train on the plethora of medical images.
one of the biggest hospital systems that we're, we're talking to right now and working with is Aurora Healthcare. Aurora Healthcare is one of the largest hospital networks in the United States, with over 15 hospitals and close to 185 clinics. Aurora gives us a strong platform to both gather the data to train our algorithms, as well as giving us pilot sites to test out our software. We're currently through the first phase of our three-phase FDA process. We're planning on cleaning that by the end of the year. And just to remind everyone, this is a clearance, not an approval. Medical software has traditionally lagged behind lots of breakthroughs in software today. And we're hoping to have a paradigm shift in the way that's that done. Behold AI, deep learning software technologies, is going to help improve both the outcome of patients as well as the workflow of doctors. Thank you. All right, nice work, guys. All right, so I know it's probably tough to ask tough questions after someone led with, like, you know, someone's cancer, but I want you guys to try it. Does anyone want to start out? Yeah, I'll start. So how do you know what works? Uh, the, the idea makes a lot of sense. I, I can believe a day in which a machine is better able to read an image than a human. But how much test data have you been able to compare it against, and, and how do you know it actually works? We have tested it on publicly available data sets, such as ImageNet, which is one of the largest uh, image databases out there in the free form. We have also tested it on medical images, and we're currently looking to um, go into hospital systems to test it out more. And, and what are the results of the test? I mean, what's your, what's your confidence, or where does your optimism come from? So for instance, in diabetic retinopathy, we are able to, det to detect that and grade it on a scale of one to five, with about 80% spe specificity. That means that um, we are about the same level as an ophthalmologist who is able to grade it on a scale of one to five with about 84% specificity. Uh, on that note, how big of a training set do you need in order to achieve the accuracy of diagnosis that you're targeting? So because we're using deep learning algorithms, these algorithms are usually very data intensive. We have uh, trained on data sets that are ranging from 10,000 images onwards. And the more data sets and the more data points we can include, the better algorithms become. Can you also talk a little bit about liability? So what are the repercussions in the case that um, someone uses this and are not able to, to diagnose something? So similar to the way, for instance, um, a cruise control, ultimately the driver is responsible for using it. Our software, the radiologist, is ultimately they're responsible for using it and determining whether they'll follow the recommendations that we give them. So, some of the biggest companies in the world are spending uh, hundreds of millions of dollars building deep learning and uh, computer vision technology that can be horizontally applied. You're gonna go at it in a very narrow vertical that over time you'll get better at. How do you end up beating you know, a, a Google or an IBM as they go out and build technology that's gonna be applied to the same problem uh, at, at a much grander scale. So the beauty of the artificial intelligence community, specifically deep learning, is that there's a lot of collaboration. For instance, companies like Facebook and Google have open source and um, frameworks that a lot of software companies can use. So small companies like us are able to hit the ground running when it comes to implementing the algorithms. Sure, but you're going to go after this, you know, radio uh, radiology. You're going to have access to only your customers' data. Uh, a company like Google is going to be able to go out and, and get a lot more images to train their system uh, to attack the same thing. So how do you, uh, don't you have to get ahead of them and, and deeper than them before they think about this area? Y yes, so the, one of the biggest things that we're working on are very specific ailments and very specific modalities. So while the bigger companies might come in, you know, IBM Watson is a great example of this. They've done a lot of great cancer uh, research in California. We can go in on very specific types of cancer using even very specific types of uh, tools to measure them. So for example, there's newer kind of retinal image uh, technologies that have come out recently. They're very, they're more niche, they're very spe market specific, but the larger companies are gonna be looking at the bigger problems first. Last question from me. Um, do you have to be integrated into the machines? And how much business development do you have to do with the machine manufacturers to be a part of their scanning systems versus a standalone almost add-on effect afterwards? That's a good question. Um, Thank you. For, <laughs> for our part, we, 
in order not to interrupt the current the existing workflow of radiologists, that is the ultimate goal, to integrate with all these GEs and McKesson and other software vendors out there who are already in the market. But for us to be approved and to go ahead in order to sell our product, we have to make a system that is also user-facing, so that's what we demoed. That demo was part of the first phase of our FDA. Cool. I'd love to hear a little bit more uh, numbers around the market size. How many customers are out there? What's their willingness to pay? And what sort of pricing model are you thinking about? Absolutely. Um, we've talked to a variety of hospitals, and there's two potential pricing models. The first being um, an annual license for radiologists that were used this, or a license for a hospital that was used this system. Down the road, and, and the ideal model that a lot of hospitals are used to using, is a per scan model because a lot of, um, for example, if you do 3D visualizations, which we plan on doing down the road, uh, there's reimbursement codes. That way, it's beneficial through, through Medicare. That way, it's beneficial to the hospital where they're not completely paying out of pocket for everything. Um, but it's also beneficial to just basically everyone involved. So, what are the number of scans per year that your software applies to? Like, what might the total market size be? I don't have the exact numbers on the number of scans per year. Uh, I know in the United States there are 37,399 radiologists. Um, something we price this around having talked to a variety of hospital systems on the, the amount of time savings that we can give them. If we said about $30,000 a year annually per radiologist, that gives us a total annual addressable market of $1.12 billion. All right, yep. any final questions before we're out of time? Go ahead. I do. do you have a sense of your false positive or false negative rates relative to a, a, a trained radiologist? Yeah, so the, the aggregate data set we, that we trained, the, the total number of errors was about 20%. Um, so the reason why we, we, are, we are still very optimistic about it is because the more data sets we get, the better our algorithms become. Yeah. And in, in addition to that, really quickly, um, once we start adding in, that's strictly looking at the image data. Once you start adding in more data, uh, such as emergency medical record data, you can actually create much more powerful models and, and actually get a higher level of accuracy. All right, let's give it up one more time for Behold AI.